What's up, Brian Tong here with all your Googleicious. It's everything Google that we can pack inside of a show. Let's jump in and the latest report from Fandroid says we can expect a whole lot more from Android Wear. Now their sources claim the next update will include a new direct watch to watch communication and new interactive watch faces. A new feature currently called Together will allow users to send messages, images and stickers or emojis directly to other Android Wear watches. Yes. Now there's no confirmation that sending your heartbeat or making drawings like the Apple Watch is part of it yet. The Googs is also working on interactive watch faces that would allow you to tap on it to change the face so that it delivers additional information to you. Think of it like cycling through a list of options with a tap. A tap could show you your current fitness levels or something like more details about the day's weather. All right, we talked about the new Google Glass Enterprise Edition last week. We know the Explorer's Edition for consumers has been squashed and according to a 9 to 5 Google report, Google is currently planning to distribute the device exclusively through their current Glass for Work partners. They aren't planning to bring it to the consumer market anytime soon and adding a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi band support is one of the improvements to help with better quality video streaming for the current workplace applications. Now Google's partners will be loading their own proprietary software on the devices in addition to the new benefits of a larger prism display and an Intel Atom processor that brings better performance and improved battery life. All right, a report by The Information says Google's next manufacturing partner for the new Nexus phone will be Huawei. Google is known to switch around between partners every year for each new phone, and Huawei would be the first Chinese manufacturer to make a pure Google smartphone. Reports also say they're working with Google to bring the Google Play Store to China, which is very restrictive. Developers have been able to upload apps to sell internationally, but in many instances, Chinese consumers are unable to download them, so this could help open up the app market overseas. Also, Google recently released the second developer preview of Android M over the weekend, and you can get it if you want to check it out at developer.android.com. It's currently only compatible with the Nexus 5, 6, 9, and the Nexus Player, but some of the improvements that you can check out include the best one, enabling the new landscape default launcher that was available to tablets but wasn't even available on some phablets. It also includes a new app drawer that brings back a more traditional four column view and you can scroll up and down and a letter will pop up on the side to show you where you are alphabetically and there's a new layout for widgets as well. You'll have the ability to quickly delete a screenshot if you don't like how it looks before it saves to your library. And there's new storage and memory settings that you can tweak along with other subtle changes. Now the official release for Android M is expected sometime around September this year. And finally, Galaxy Note 5 fans will be getting good news sooner rather than later. After a Wall Street Journal report says Samsung is planning to move the launch of the Note 5 forward from September to August to get the device on sale ahead of Apple's typical September iPhone launch. Recent earnings reports continue to show Samsung smartphone profits falling as smartphone sales overall are also slowing. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can always email us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time for some more of that Googleicious. Googleicious.